interesting. So that puts the task onto the uh, support role, right? There's, uh, there's, oh, sorry, onto the core role. So there is, yeah. there's no way he's, he's gonna be a support any longer. Neon, they go for the Snapfire Ember. I like this much better than their than their previous draft, really. And uh, this now puts the Marcy in the core role, most likely mm -hmm. in the uh, in the off lane. Both Hoodwink and the Snapfire go really well with this hero. I'm, I'm a bit of a fan when Hoodwink does have that. Blink stun initiation, but I think Ember is good enough. Slide of his chains is good enough of a setup for the uh, for the Hoodwing to dish out the damage. Mm -hmm. And every single hero now has mobility and or reach on Neon Esports. Like as passive as the previous lineup was, this one is active. This one, any of these two heroes that you put together, you can cross the distance towards enemies. You can always reach them. You always have damage. Um, and Polaris is responding in kind with some playmakers as well. I mean, Batrider, Dark Willow, right? Or Tusk, Dark Willow, even Rubik, Dark Willow. You hold people in place, you get the Bedlam out. as a surprising amount of damage every single time. Like, it, it keeps sneaking up on me how much a Dark Willow can do if she just gets to sit on top of somebody with that fairy going around. So they've got some really good combination plays here as well. The name of the Wisp is Jex. And, Jex. Uh, and uh, with the, if you have the Immortal, then uh, the name of him is Gloombob. It says that uh, Jex went on a break and that he recommended Gloombob as a good uh, replacement. That is so businesslike, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> a scheduled my vacation. <laughs> You know, Gloombob is that one that bounces, you know, if you mm. if you haven't seen it. Um, anyways, though, some people pick an Ember into the Bat. Some people pick a Bat into the Ember. How do you feel about this matchup? How do I feel about the matchup? Um, I would usually err on the side of the Bat Rider just because the execution is easier. But, you know, this is SCA. If you can get away with the spirit hero, then these players will try to get away with the spirit hero. So I have no doubt that they're not going to actually try to dodge this bat on the uh, on the Ember at all. And you do get like a hero that's good at escaping any lasso attempts later. You do get a hero that is good at pushing out side lanes, which the bat is otherwise going to use as map pressure against you. Um, if you can get through that laning phase, if you have that confidence, you know what? But go for it. But I would rather be on the bad side. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that's fine because it's it's really weird that that we see different approaches from uh, from different players from different teams. Everyone thinks that they're gonna be the ones that beat the bat, or every bat thinks mm -hmm. that they're gonna be the one that beats the ember. Uh, usually, the one that picks second, from what I've seen, the one that is super <laughs> confident, I got these guys, it does uh, does fail miserably. But uh, we'll see if uh, if that does happen. So. Uh, Neon, what do you get to finish this one off? You need a carry. You are going to be laning against the Tusk Rubik or against the Tusk Dark Willow. Yep. A lot of kill pressure on that lane and both of the carries that are in the meta right now that can actually escape from the Tusk have been taken out. Um, I mean, if, you, if you're really set on escaping, you could always pull a Hector and go for a Phantom Lancer. Um, it would be nice versus the Bat Rider as well. Some decent dispels versus the Dark Willow, for example. But <laughs> I, I don't think a lot of other people are a fan of the PL right now. I would love it, actually. It's such a good PL yeah. game. It's such a good it's phenomenal, PL. right? Yeah. It doesn't get much better than it. Ooh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, you, you still have yeah. Purge for the Dark Willow. Dark Willow hates playing against that. Uh, I guess now with the with the shard, it's a little bit different. So even if you purge off, you're still getting brambled. But Polaris, they respond to an Ursa with a Weaver. That's a yeah. uh, that's a new one. Something I uh, I definitely wasn't expecting. No, but like an uh, a hero that can get active early on Akashi, like. This is exactly the kind of player that you would want to see try the Weaver game, you know? So, yeah, not quite expecting that at all. Lots of damage output. And I guess the catch on Neon Esports, as much as they have of it, a lot of it is dodgeable. Like, the only instant stun that you're going to be able to get out is from the Hoodwink. And like, I'm sure that as a Weaver you can work around that, especially with Tusk saves on your team. 
Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it works out. I have seen a couple of weavers uh, in Eastern Europe. Now he's in Division Two. Shigetsu plays uh, plays a ton of weaver so much that sometimes it is banned out in the uh, in the first phase. So I know that the hero can work. Heroes of Neon are very low armor and very squishy. So this to me looks like mm -hmm. a really decent weaver game. Plus no super hard lockdowns, right? Exactly. So I'm. Uh, I'm liking it. The only thing I, I think that they're lacking is tower taking potential. But when it comes to other objectives like Roche, I think they're actually quite okay there. Yeah, and the Roche should be very good between the Weaver and the Tusk. That is that is not a problem whatsoever. But yeah, they, they're going to have to dive towers. And to be fair, uh, so will Neon. Like, I don't see much in the way of uh, siege on their side either. Yeah, so... Looking at the uh, at the drafts right now, um, any preferences? We I, we both agree Polaris are looking as a better team, but uh, mm -hmm. do you think Neon it's going to be easier for them in this in this game too? Yeah, absolutely. They've given themselves plenty of opportunities to actually make plays, to actually have reach. Like Rubik, Dark Willow are pretty squishy as supports, um, and they really only have an instant lift to protect themselves with, so it's very possible to kill the supports first and then go for the rest, which is the way that I think team fights should go right now. Um, the it's not going to look as bad as previously for sure, but Akashi on a weaver that's going to have both a good time farming as well as a good time killing. Yeah, it's hard for me to not go with Polaris again. Uh, Polaris are looking pretty good. You know, yesterday even when they were playing against uh, Xerxia, I think their drafting was on point. Right, their plays are solid. I can't say that they don't make any mistakes, but it is uh, it is pretty clean. Um, but their drafts for me have been like uh, pretty nice. You know, there is an idea behind it. But this time around, at least Neon, whenever in the game, even if they're super far behind, they can always make a kill. Right, sharpshooter, exactly. Ursa, Ember. There is potential, yeah. so I'm uh, I'm liking that they have uh, a potential to do that. Um, Polaris do not actually have like a big uh, responsive lockdown here. Like a lot of these reactive spells need time to wind up from the Dark Willow, from the Tusk. So if this Ursa has a really good game, yeah, you can you can maul some people. You can get some people down with all of this burst damage, both the physical as well as the magical, before the fight really gets going. And Polaris doesn't have any big tanky boys to put in front to tank up any of that. So, yeah, give me a, give me a good game. I think if we, you know, if we look at the first game, and we saved up a bunch of credit points, right, to get like a close game now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, though, yeah, you know, uh, excitement wasn't lacking in the previous one because uh, it was all fun, especially for the first 15 minutes. Just there were kills all around. Just kidding, of course. It was uh, it was very underwhelming for the first 15 minutes. We had like six, seven kills all around. But now looking at this game, it, do it does seem like it is going to be a bit more action-packed at the start. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, Marcy Hoodwink Lane on the bottom here versus... Uh, CML is in for a world of hurt, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, don't be like that. Why? Why do you think so? Why? Why would I think so? Yeah. Well, between between the reach and the <laughs> and the damage, like the Weaver has absolutely nothing to help with. Like he can chip. Like the the hope you have here as Polaris is that you can keep him low enough on Tsukimoto and Enryu that one of them is always going to die, or maybe two of them are going to die if they go on your support. But that is pretty unrealistic, as far as I'm concerned. And they, we have the want on Enryu as well. He knows that there's going to be Sukuchi spam. He's going to know that there's going to be spam from the Dark Willow as well. <laughs> yeah. He did start off with the Ring of Protection of the Dark Willow, so we can expect maybe an urn to come out a little bit later, but that mm -hmm. is a good thing to help him, especially against the Blightstone of the Hoodwing. CML even got the Courier, and he has done a ton of damage to Neon, so in the end, the one bringing in the hurt is, uh, has been CML, not the other way around. But uh, let's let's talk a little bit mid lane. I think we already touched upon that one in the draft, so top lane. This is, uh, this is the one where... A lot of action could be happening as well. The Ursa and a uh, Snapfire. That's a lot of kill potential. Absolutely. But Tusk Robic is not a slouch either. The thing is, of course, that Fortune Soul, 
with the Urshock will usually be able to get out of the shards if he so desires. And of course, there, there's always that question of uh, Tusk is normally, you're normally locked in there with the Tusk, but when there's an Ursa in there, maybe you are locked in there with him instead. So altogether, like for the lane, this is a really good pick. And I have no doubt that Polaris needs to play this one just a little bit more careful than it would with a normal Tusk Rubik lane. And uh, Hated is being smacked by the Rubik. Does get the uh, uh, the shot off there with the Scatter Blast, but the Rubik just stands his ground. Is level two, mm -hmm. so you need to be careful. A potential lift and the uh, Tusk coming from the side with the Snowball could take your life down. So, um, for so far, no... Uh, no big actions happening. Mid lane, relatively equal in terms of CS, and everyone mm -hmm. is farming for now. Yep. And this bad rider, you know, holding the point in the Firefly for now, two points up in the Sticky Napalm, so is angling to get a kill here if Ken oversteps. Okay. Um, I missed that one. So we can get the T tours in the chat. Um, it is gonna be a first blood onto the uh, onto the snapfire. I didn't get the level two. Does get gone on shards, snowball, and that is that is kind of the only time you get it. Because once you get the cookie, mm -hmm. it's gonna be much tougher. Exactly, which is why I think neither of us saw it coming. We're just like, oh yeah, it's a snapfire, it's a cookie, it's not gonna happen. Well, not yet. It wasn't. One more creep would have done it. And as soon as hated comes into the lane, Jing God. Just uh, mm. smacks him back, you know, 200 HP gone just like that. You're going to be needing to use the Tango immediately if you uh, want to keep yourself up there. Um, there are going to be some attempts here onto the life of Tsukimoto, okay? It's not only going to be an attempt, it's going to be a successful kill with the, uh, nice. with the swarm connecting. You don't go anywhere. Yeah, and so far my prediction for this bottom lane is completely wrong. I was expecting this level 3 to be a turn for the Hoodwink. Marcy, Marcy with the full arsenal up. But no, instead the, uh, the Hoodwink finds herself completely separated from the Marcy. And yeah, the Weaver can and will chase you down. He will never miss much on the lane because of all of the speed that he gets from the Tsukuchi. So let's see now, jump in from NU and Shadow Realm is going to be protecting the Dark Willow, gets out the hit. Bramble May is not really going to be connecting on anything other than the creep, so no one is uh, going to be caught by that one. But Weaver is going to be caught by the Bushwhack and doesn't have a Shikuchi for quite some time, so Akashi needs to be a bit careful about what he does, but for now he is going to be okay. The evasiveness of Polar is really working out in their favor here. I'm very curious to see what we're going to be seeing on this Weaver here. What has their itemization been in uh, in Eastern Europe so far? Because you said uh, you've seen it a couple of times. Uh, it usually has been the Maelstrom, right? Okay, um, yeah. I think I have seen both them skipping the boots and going for the power treads. I don't know if it has to do with the meta. Falcon Blade also has been a staple, so I'm kind of surprised that he went double Raid Band. I expected one Raid Band, one Falcon Blade. Yeah, especially because of the mana regen, right? If you're yep. a Tsukuchi spammer, and that, that is usually the build. Uh, interesting. So Akashi, with this kind of a start, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes like double raid band, power treads, dragon lance. That would be a, a viable build as well, I think. Because uh, you yeah. go full stats and you don't really rely on that much on being elusive. Yep, and it would work really well versus this lineup where the Ursa is uh, is not going to be active for a while. We know Akashi, he can definitely come in early and wreak some havoc. I haven't talked much about the mid lane, uh, where the bat is slightly over the ember, but ever so slightly there was a TP being used by the ember there. He got the bat low, but he had a ton of charges on him, so uh, he needed to TP himself out if he wanted to live, and in the end that's exactly what's going to happen. But this ember is actually doing quite well. He's going to get level yeah. 6. And uh, Akashi, he finishes off Tsukimoto, who isn't uh, doing quite well. The squirrel is going to be hunted down for the second time. <laughs> mid lane, Mac. Almost mm -hmm. uh, dying as well, though Ken isn't uh, isn't that healthy either. No, it was like, who's going to get a chain onto who faster? In the end, it is going to be yep. the Batrider that gets caught. And that was that was mostly about the mana situation. I was watching it for a little bit, and Ken would have had that one in the bag with his earlier six if he would have had the mana to actually use his remnants, but he did not. And now, no kills for you, Sonny. 
Uh, but he found the perfect rune against the bat. It is the illusion, so that's gonna be quite nice. Being able to reset the stacks is always nice, meaning that Ken could go a bit uh, more aggressive if he wants to, though he, uh, he might just use this illusion now so that he is... Uh, he does have the the mana necessary to continue laning. 2k gold lead Polaris. This time around, they start off with a 3-0, and whoa, they almost get the fourth one. They're TP out from Enryu. Neon, though, this time around on the bottom lane, they do survive. But uh, it is looking like a beautiful start for Polaris. Yeah, bailing like that is never good news for your lane. Uh, at least there's an attempt on... No, never mind. A Bok steps out on the top lane as well. This Ember Spirit is going to be the one making the plays for Neon now, so it's good that he's got... Well, I say that. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's in a lot of trouble. He even gets pulled into another Bramble. And that is the thing. You're playing against the Dark Willow. You know, this, mm -hmm. uh, this hero is a bane of an Ember's existence, right? Usually you are happy when there's a lot of units, so you can go for a uh, huge slide of fist and no one can catch you, but then there's a Bramble waiting for you. Yep. And it will always be waiting for you. I mean, at, at least you can dodge the crowns, right? It's not all bad. Okay, okay, if you say so. But uh, Bramble, Terrorize, goodbye, Ember. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm a positive person. How many yeah. more times do I need to tell you? Yes, but I need to match your positivity with negativity. So uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's just me being a good colleague here, Kips. It's... Uh... So what are we yeah. all about? We're doing Man. the good cop, bad cop? <laughs> yes, yes, we always do that. Uh, anyway, Tsukimoto uh, is getting gone on. This is a hero that dies super fast, and even with the Brambles not connecting, it is still a kill. Fifth one for Polaris. They're continuing their dominion over the map from the previous game. Slide of his chains onto Mac. Hate it. Thinking about it, only level one cookie. That is not something that is going to change much. And CML and Jinka now both leave their side lanes alone. Both of them very independent, both of them level 6 already. So, yeah, I guess the Ursa gets a little bit out of the support being away. He will definitely win the matchup straight up versus Bok if he gets left alone like that. But they're, they're cool with that. And the pressure onto mid. The fact that Ken gets to do nothing, he's low again. He just got back to this lane. Oh, he uh, will dodge the crown. There it is. Going on to CML. Slide of his chase. He is killing CML. He is doing something but dying right after it to the Rubik Zap. Hated. Goes for a TP out. There is no lasso. They maybe could have tried to kill that uh, Snaffar, but Mac didn't want to bother. Just uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't something that he wanted to put his efforts in and is going to be stealing the enemy bounty there to refill the bottle. No, and that's pressure right there. That's just... That's just... A play that a player makes when he's pressured, he feels the need to do something, anything, so he goes in in a situation where it's really quite ill-advised. Yeah. Uh, so it is going to be a Maelstrom on the Weaver. Stays with the double Raid Pass. The only thing he has for mana is the stick. That could prove yep. to be a problem later on, but we'll see. Um, the only hero that is doing well and he's doing very well is the Ursa. Fortune Soul is having a great time, especially compared to the other uh, side lane core, which is the Marcy that has had like the worst game of her life. Yeah, I really did not expect it to be that bad, but I guess between the Shadow Ram and the Sukuchi, it was just impossible to actually latch on to anybody and deliver the brawling that the Marcy is so famous for. Ember goes towards top. Uh, he still has the chain, so can go for Bok and will be able to dodge the Curse Crown, but he stuns his Ursa while he's going through that one. Ursa will be fed a cookie, it doesn't matter, you took one for the team and the shards are just gonna be uh, putting Bok in a position between a Ember and a Ursa and uh, not a lot of people can survive that one, neither will he, so the rotation of the Ember, successful. Yep, uh, very important that he chooses to rotate into the winning lane here. Um, a lot of players, when they get behind like this, make the mistake of, okay, well, my, my Marcy is losing, therefore I need to help the Marcy out. But he correctly identifies that if you actually want to bring down people fast enough, you go into the winning lane, help it win even harder. And this is going to be such a fast battle of fury for this Ursa. Uh, it's uh, it's looking amazing, and he has the face boots. He has the magic stick. It's not like he rushed it with the uh, with the brown boots. He is looking really good. And we talked about it. Ursa is uh, is a great pick in this game. You know, once you get to that blink dagger basher timing, the uh, weaver, the bat rider, these heroes are in trouble. 
Absolutely, and you get the when you get the shard, you're going to get a lot of dispels. I don't want to say for free, but basically for free as well. It's going to be a very good time versus the Willow versus the Bat Rider. Very enjoyable Ursa game. Move from Neon. They want the Bat, but. Bat is a flaming piggy that uh, just uh, gets out of that one, so Neon are not going to be catching anyone with this move. Maybe a Weaver is a uh, is a target, but there is going to be a Bat there as well. Yeah, I, I don't know if the Weaver is ever a target. Maybe he will be if he overextends. Yeah, and uh, could be something that is happening right now. Nope, Andrew removes the bug and Akashi have you overextended. Slider Fist used, chains haven't been used just yet. They would need the bushwhack to connect. Not gonna be happening. Akashi is out, so wasn't really that good of a target. The lead of Polaris is gonna continue to increase. And Ken lost half of his health there and he barely touched the Weaver. Dive top. Dive top from Polaris. They won't hate it. They're gonna be needing some help because a lot of TPs are coming in from Neon, but the Batrider has come in as well. They're surrounding Neon here. But let's see. Sharpshooter is gonna connect onto the Dark Willow. Nice terrorize. Ursa, though, he's enraged and he wants to fight, but they will kill the Dark Willow. It doesn't matter because the Tusk will be getting out. And Neon, they use so many TPs only for a Dark Willow kill. Yeah, that is really not worth it, Akashi making some stacks in the meanwhile that's got the rubik to help out here as well it's going to feel really good and as much as i said that you know you got to help out the winning lane that's not exactly the same as responding on a dive with four heroes it's not proactive that's reactive and it gives so much space to polaris so smoke is used by neon under a ward that is just going oh. to expire. So not a uh, not the ideal scenario. Rubik hiding in the trees wants to break that one. Dark Willow CML is going forward rather than backwards. Like wants to take that smoke maybe break it, but they're looking towards the bat and Mac knows something is up. He can feel it. Uh, no, he cannot feel it. He's going for the farm and uh, might soon find out that was a bad move. There is. That sharpshooter waiting for him. No, he just... <laughs> they were waiting okay. for the snap. They thought they didn't have enough damage, and maybe they were right, but... I, I 20 stick charges, 1500 HP. Yeah, they, they were probably right. Polaris, they go for a very fast move. They are going to be scanned out. So, uh, Neon knows. Hate it. Blink Dagger, Lasso, going to be used. Bushwhack onto two. Very nicely done. Beautiful. Nice. They turn around. Hate it. It's still alive. And Fortress all goes in. He wants to start punching everyone, ripping them oh. apart. Ken gets a double, and they'll get a bonus. CML, he might have been able to protect himself in the shadows for the time being and in the lane, but this time around, the Marcy rebound connects, and the Ursa finishes the job. I, Hoodwink is such a beastly counter initiator. It's absolutely insane. And yeah, Bad Rider should have uh, should have burnt down the trees some more because then you don't get bushwhacked like that. But he uh, he was actually making that play without the Firefly, I believe. So unfortunate for Polaris. I I was going to say like you know well if Neon makes that plays at least the bad rider is going to be low he's not going to go for the fast play in your triangle right now but never mind it's great that the bad rider had full status to go for that play that works out perfectly yeah for sure so Mac gonna be continuing to farm he is going for a blink four stab build I haven't seen this for a very long time especially you know for a mid lane bat it it has <laughs> always been the BKB yeah and I. It's, it's very interesting to me as well, because right now, the only physical damage is... Actually, no, there, there is a, a bunch of physical from the Marcy as well, right? I can I can see why a 4-staff is just very powerful this game. But... It's not like the magical damage is negligible this game either. Uh, true, Fortune Soul does have the Enrage, not the easiest of targets in the back lines. It is going to be hated, being caught, but Tsukimoto is there to protect Bok. No Snowball, who's going to be hit? It is going to be CML. Goes into the Shadow Realm. Marcy has been stunned. The Curse Crown is there. Terrorized, not going to be coming out. She's dead. Fortune Soul going for Jing. Okay, he's going to be missing all, all we're on that jump. Uh, the uh, Ember gets himself out, and this is going to be a very separated fight. Tusk will go with the Uppercut Punch onto the Snapfire, but the Weaver is finally a part of the fight, and he wants to clean up right now. Doesn't have the ulti, and he'll 
longer. So turning back time, not a possibility. Ursa tries to get back. Not gonna be happening. Everybody's dying. Finally, Polaris are gonna start to bring heroes down. And this might be a bonus. Tukimoto lifted up into the air, put into the ground, and Jing with a kill secure on the fade bolt. It is four heroes dead on Neon. And Polaris, they only lose two. Uh, one of those is the Tusk who finally showed up, but he showed up with a full Guardian Greaves. And the amount of damage that they needed, the amount of attention that they needed to put into him before bringing him down there was really detrimental to Neon's capabilities of actually um, making anything happen in that fight. <laughs> Mac double damage, blinks in. Who cares that you don't have a lasso, man? Just kill the wave. Uh, they will uh, probably bring down the tower actually the ember comes over wants to prevent this with the siege creep surviving in the next wave of creeps The tower is dying 100% It's just a question. Can you deny it? Snowball there gonna be saving himself from the bushwhack Bok very nicely done It will get the shards off and in the end the tower gets taken by the siege creep. It is not gonna be denied Oh neon they uh, They continue to uh, to lose objectives on the map Yeah, they continue to suffer this, this Ember Spirit, again, you can see that he knows he needs to do things, but every time he just gets punished so hard. And it's not going to get any better for him either. There's going to be a pretty early Yule Scepter up on his support, Dark Willow. If you go in, you're going to get lifted. You're going to end up in the Brambles, in the Terrorize. And you need you need a BKB. Look, look at this man. <laughs> From one Bramble to another. It is not looking good currently. Dark Willow is uh, not going to be maxing out the Cursed Crown, so doesn't want a shard. Yeah, that's uh, not pretty much you're, when you're going for a Yules. This is the build. And you close to the BKB, but so close to death. They know. <sighs> mm, he's going to get hunted down in the trees. Where yeah, are just. You? <sighs> Marco! <laughs> yeah. Polo and Hated is dead as well. And that is gonna be three heroes that Mac might be going down with the Earth Shock. Ursa does get in range there to finish him off, so the lasso will be broken before it actually expires. Slide of Fist Chains connects. They don't have the Weaver here, so Ursa going forward. Snowball safe. Terrorize is gonna be used. Ursa didn't get the enrage off, and he's gonna be running away from a He's fight. Outside. Bears! Bears are usually the ones that do want to fight. The uh, Rubik does steal the ulti from the Ember and leaves the Tusk behind. The yeah, my laning buddy, you die, I live. The Bedlam is gonna be coming out. Gloom Bob, they're trying to do the damage and Akashi finally comes into the fight, but into oh, no. the arms of the bear and he's dead. Akashi, he has just joined like, yeah, I'm here to save the day for Neon apparently mm -hmm. because that is gonna be a big kill for them. Let's see a good old anti-mage show up, right? All right, all of the fighting is done. Now I come to clear up the kills. And he gets absolutely squished for his troubles. <laughs> uh, okay. deserved, deserved, I guess. But that was beautiful play from the Dark Willow, especially. You just separate out that Ursa, send him running back to base. And the Ember Spirit is still so fragile. At least he got a bunch of gold out of this fight. So finally the Emperor will be able to, you know, buy that, uh, that Ograx if he'd like to get himself a little bit more HP. What? You buy the Mithril Hammer, you want the damage. Like, what, what are you even talking about, Gibbs? There's no <laughs> way. Yeah. He's not buying anything. You know, times that I've seen that. Mm. <laughs> well, as long as you don't get caught, I guess it doesn't matter, huh? Yeah, that but, is true. Uh, there is a BKB on the Ursa right now. So that is finally big. all of this all of this delay, yeah, all of the Dark Willow spells, Fortune Soul is just going to ignore those. Um, of course, the problem that he has now is that there's going to be an Aegis on the enemy team, unless they do anything about it right now. Like Jing is already in the way. It's going to be so hard to get into the pit in time, even though this is a fairly slow Roche. Uh, the uh, bug was taken down, but now another oh, smoke is coming out. Rubik, he broke their smoke. He broke there's oh they have another one who the hell cares we are coming over the throw is yeah it is yours but that's really bad for an Ursa they are gonna be shooting Extra down the dark willow and he does get the ulti onto the Ember the Ember is dead now going for Andrew maybe maybe if you had the extra HP from the Ogre Axe you would have lived hated the Mortimer's Kisses will get the kill but will be going down immediately afterwards Ember does have a buyback to go onto his remnant but none of the heroes of Neon wanna fight Tsukimoto oh please don't kill me come on guys what the deal with you let me live not gonna happen polaris are ruthless killers and they'll get four heroes down get the roche and they just lose a dark willow 
Yeah, but on Polaris just get to pick who they want to kill. The fact that the Ursa has quite a bit of network could deal a lot of damage in this game. It it would matter if they got to actually hit anybody, but the parts of his team that engage, part of his team that go in and make first contact with the enemy just die as soon as that happens basically. And then what's what's an Ursa without a blink dagger to do? Yes, he, uh, he can't get on top of anyone. He is gonna have it though. Uh, he didn't pop the BKB in the previous fight, so Fortune Soul is still having a solid enough game. Is this the game that he has, right? He is still up there in terms of net worth. Can he win it for his team considering that they're so far behind? Doubtful because I don't see any way that Akashi needs to give him the opportunity to actually win the man fight if it comes down to that. Mm, but Polaris can definitely overextend and lose several heroes at once, as we saw during the uh, the dive on the triangle before. Like that scenario can totally repeat, and it there's a pretty decent chance that it happens because Polaris has been very gung ho about going in, which is the way their lineup plays best. I like that you mentioned how good of a uh, counter initiation the Hoodwink is. Rubik now has the bushwhack, so he's very good at counter initiating. And he has a blink and an ether lens. None of those items does the Hoodwing have. So uh, he's a much better counter initiator, initiator, whatever you want than the uh, than the Hoodwing right. currently. Yep, two Yule scepters up on Polaris as well. Uh, that Ember. I, I to be fair, the Ograx <laughs> wouldn't have helped him the this time no. or the other one. Uh. We're we're starting to make mouth sounds, Harry. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the players can't uh, hear us, so they're not going to be uh, annoyed by it. Enryu, though, has a BKB. Ursa has a blink. Neon are ready to fight. They don't have their ember. He does have a buyback, so he can join the fight if need be. But in 20 seconds, they're going to be back at full force. Is this the timing? Uh, this is the only one that you're going to get, so yeah, make, make it happen. Leverage that net worth. Get that Ursa in. Let's see, Mac, he does use the illusion and they jump, we're gonna crush this illusion, no. let's go, it's done, it's dead. They do still hit to the Weaver and the Weaver is coming forward but he has the Aegis, even if you kill him once it's still gonna be a disaster, he might get his ulti off Akashi, there it is, and he is gonna be fine for now, turns around onto the Urso, has been hit by the Bushwhack, Fortune Soul still hasn't popped his BKB, still hasn't popped his ulti, can still fight Bog, oh the Curse Crown onto the two of them, and now with the Terrorize, stolen kisses, you can see green there, Rubik hasn't really brushed his teeth this morning but it doesn't matter it's gonna be even better and even more effective than the standard mortimer scissors fortune soul did get a double kill there with the ursa doing so much ken getting himself out doesn't have any more remnants looks very dead slot of his chains akashi will lose the aegis ken will lose his life but the same fate will be upon this bat rider too it's a three for three plus the aegis neon have Four, won a fight actually Kips, but uh, no actually this uh, this Hoodwing mm. died. No, didn't die. It, nope. They won the fight. They did win the fight with Fortune Soul just sticking on the backline supports and Ken living, 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 living after getting chased down all the way from one end of the bottom lane to the other. Yeah, this, this is probably their best scenario. Uh, are you seeing this? When Rubik uses the Earth Shock, the Ursa gains the Enrage animation. Huh. That's... That Do were you calling Dota 2 a consistent game earlier? Was yes. that you? Yes, and you. He's gonna be consistently dead in this game. And there it is, jumping from the Ursa. He didn't have the shard, and you saw he was red there. So, yeah, definitely the case. They do bring down Enryu, but they're gonna be losing the Dark Willow for their troubles. Akashi, he has a bug onto the Ursa. They have the Yules. Status resistance doesn't help against this. And finally, they're gonna bring the beast down. This is, that is the one that they were waiting for, and they'll get the snap fire to Akashi. Will destroy the poor old grandma as well. And Jing will be the one that secures the kill in the end. Yeah, but there's a butterfly on Akashi now. I don't actually think that the Ursa has anything to say about that. The, the scenario will remain Ursa needs to kill whoever he can on Polaris. It's just not going to be Akashi. It's not ever going to be Akashi. Yeah, the uh, tower is not going to be defended. Tsukimoto hiding in the trees. Does have that plate mail, so uh, Hoodwink. At least she's protecting herself. 28 armor, but who's going to be protecting the Raxes? The Glyph. The Glyph. A mysterious force from above. Oh, Short-lived, though. 
and you don't want to buy back on this Ursa here. Like you have a BKB available on Enryu, you can do the same old spiel with Enryu going in, attracting all the attention, Ursa jumping the back lines, but you're not going to buy back for that. So instead, Durax is full. Uh, and the gold lead continues to increase, 17,000 for, uh, for Polaris Neon. Even with that fight win on the bottom lane, they still lost the tower. They still have one outer tower that is being so well under vision of the enemies that mm -hmm. Polaris, they can, they can go for a play here whenever they want. They see everything. Exactly. I really don't think Neon is in a position to... Like, sometimes you see these these sneaky plays where the Hoodwink is right now, you know, filter your team and no, not... not that, that. <laughs> They see you. They see everything. This is not the moment to be doing that. Oh, sentry right on top of a ward. Look at that. And Hayden does take oh it God, down. Oh, we got spotted. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Kashi taking some damage. Andrew, I don't really know what the jump was, but he does give the movement speed to the Ursa that is going to be expiring now. Guardian Greaves were used, so everyone is going to be fine. Tusk is approaching the uh, the Aghanim Scepter. That is uh, another dangerous item mm -hmm. for Neon. You can just kick the Ursa out of any situations where he's not welcome. And alternatively, of course, she can grab a Hoodwink and uh, give her the ride of a lifetime. How do you even play this game as an Ursa against three Yule Scepters? Currently, there's two, but there's gonna be the third one on the uh, on the Rubik. You're the only hero on your side that does anything, and now there's gonna be three items that completely counter anything you try to do. Mm, I don't know. You hope that your BKB allows you to kill somebody fast enough. That's that's literally it. It's sold during his BKB now. As soon as it's over, his game is over. Uh, one hero taken down. There is going to be another one. The supports will die, but one buyback did come out. Hoodwink wants to be a part of this fight. Ken running in with the BKB, but the Weaver packs a punch, and even through that one, the physical damage will be enough for Ken to give up on using this 9-second BKB for anything other than showing it off to the enemies and then running back into the base. No good jump opportunities for Fortune Soul there whatsoever. He holds his BKB, he holds his Skull Basher. Like, certainly not going to try and get a lucky bash on Akashi and hoping that it all works out. I mean, <laughs> soon that is going to be his only play though. Pop the BKB, pop the Enrage, pray. Polaris had a very weird attempt there of taking down this Tinker Ward. And uh, they don't manage to do it. The Swarm doesn't give the vision long enough. And then uh, Rubik tried to do it with a Scatter Blast, which isn't a vision-giving spell. So the no. ward will will remain there. But uh, Neon just can't stay out of their base for long because of the top lane. The creeps are constantly pushing in. Dark Willow is going to give it the old college try. There we go. Just put your own ward up. Yep. If we have... Uh, a Tusk, who has, from a boxer, been upgraded to a kickboxer, so now there's uh, <laughs> there's gonna be two ways of him uh, using his limbs for uh, for war, and uh, this, this one is gonna be quite nice, you know, repositioning people. Lift, lasso, and a kick. I mean, Neon, they, they can't do anything. And imagine even if Fortune Soul would get the right jump, he's gonna get kicked away. Yep. I mean, that just means that you have to... I mean, Bok has to be on somebody else already. Ideally on Enryu. Yeah. But like, you can't, you can't make him. You have no ways to make him fight Enryu. This is not an LC. <laughs> there is no duel. All he can do is jump on him and hope that, you know, the Tusk's fighting emotions get the better of him. It's like, I am the better brawler. Mano a mano. Let's go. Let's see, nice ward here from Neon. They're waiting for a fight. The transition between the lanes, that is when it's dangerous. Weaver, though, is a hard hero to kill, especially when he has two lives. They are gonna jump on him. They take down the tree and now lift him up. Weaver turns back time, gonna be fine. That's gonna be a dieback, and that is a nice usage of the Dark Will ulti, but they do pop the uh, BKBs in the end still. Now Marcy gets kicked back, and Ember Spirit, where are you gonna run to? He goes in! He goes in like a man! Let's fight! Yeah, you are not gonna be regretting that one. Mortimer's kisses, mwah, Polaris. Yeah, Jink will be going down, and uh, they get a nice kiss, and the Grandma gets a kick. That's what she gets for sacrificing so much for you young guns, but still, in the end, Polaris, they do get the victory. 24,000 gold. This game, it lasted a little bit less than the uh, than the previous one, but it was no less dominating from uh, from Polaris. 
Absolutely not. And as, as much playmaking potential as Neon brings to the table here compared to the first game, like the way that Polaris dodged the fights that they didn't want, like that, that bottom lane, I think that Neon had a very different expectations for what that bottom lane was going to be as well. But if your Marcy does not have a game and your Ember is stuck on an island trying to be the only one that does anything and there's just two supports, you know, one of them on the left, one of them on the right, looking yeah, you want you want a rune? You want a rune? Huh? 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 What is he going to do? Yeah, you you do you do nothing really, and that was that was kind of the uh, the story here for Neon in this series. They really didn't do anything to Polaris for the hour and three minutes for how long they have been brawling inside of the game. It was Polaris all along. I, I don't know if you in any of these games saw like, okay, Neon are doing fine right now. In like two three minutes, they are gonna be the ones ahead because I didn't. No, absolutely not. Like, maybe if they get another couple fights, like the defensive fight that they got in the triangle, like if Polaris for some reason just, you know, A clicks their fountain, but Polaris is smarter than that. They get, just because they have the tools doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be using them all the time. And that really gives Neon no opportunities to actually get the fights that they want. Uh, and with that, we end the first series of the day. But guys, do not despair. There's two more left. The next one is going to be an exciting one for sure. Team Reaper will be facing off against Ehome. And who's going to be winning that series? Well, we find out after a short break. So stay with us. We're coming back in around 10, 15 minutes. And the Dota just continues. So we'll be right back.